So the way we define the target impedance is based on Ohm's law. So z sub t that is shown over here is what we call as the target impedance, which represents the upper limit on the power distribution net, uh, network impedance that we need to maintain in a system to ensure that your power supply noise never exceeds a maximum value. So if you look at Ohm's law, it's nothing but the ratio of voltage to the current. The only difference over here is that the voltage and the current represent transient values or frequency dependent values. In the numerator, you have VDD times ripple, where ripple represents the percent change that is allowable between the VDD and ground nodes of the transistor level circuit. And in the denominator, you have the current, IMAX, which can either be the maximum current or the minimum current, or in this case, you can use a 50% fudge factor, which then represents the average current. So if you look at this equation, what is very useful about this equation is that it is quite straightforward for you to compute both the numerator and the denominator because the supply voltage for a transistor is very well known because you're designing using that parameter. The ripple is also well known because that is a spec for the transistor. In the denominator, the current can be obtained by looking at the relationship between power and voltage. And during the design of any IC, you always know what the power level is. What makes it a little difficult to use is the fact that Z sub t is a frequency dependent parameter. Or in other words, if you look at the denominator, the current that is being drawn by the IC can also change as a function of frequency. Or in other words, unless you have that information, you end up with a constant value for target impedance if you assume a constant value for the current. Either way, you can always use the target impedance based on the information you have to design your power distribution network. And this one parameter, I believe, has completely changed our methodology for designing power distribution networks for the last 10 years. So what does this target impedance allow you to do? In a system, you can look at any node in that system to figure out how much of supply noise you're going to have at that particular node in the system. So if you look at this graph, the y-axis represents the impedance of the power distribution network looking at any node in the system. Let us assume for now that you're looking at it from the VDD and ground rails of the transistor level circuit. And the x-axis represents your frequency. So based on the system that you're trying to design and using the formula showed in the previous slide, you can now calculate a target impedance value. And when you now design your power delivery network, you want to make sure that the impedance as it varies as a function of frequency is always less than the target impedance value. Now, if you look at the graph that is shown over there, you will always see peaks and valleys for the power distribution network frequency response. The valley is what we call as the resonance, and the frequency at which you see the peak is what we call as the anti-resonance. So in any power distribution network, you always want to make sure that the impedance value at the peak is at low as, as low as possible, and you want to try to do the same thing with the resonance points as well. Now, in a power delivery network, as I said earlier, it consists of you know, several parts, starting all, all, all the way from the power supply, which is what we call as a voltage regulator module, or VRM, okay? And then you go through the power distribution network in the PCB, the package, and the, and, and the die, and along the way, you also have lots of decoupling capacitors. If you now look at the frequency response of the power delivery network, you will always see regions where either the VRM dominates, the capacitors dominate, the planes in the package dominate, or the on-die capacitance dominates. And any time there is an interaction is where you would either see a resonance or an anti-resonance. So as a designer, our goal is always to make sure that the power distribution net uh, impedance based on the frequency bandwidth we want to support is always less than the target impedance value for that particular system. 